Australia's coral sea is an environmental and historical treasure. It's a tropical sea that's largely intact, a rare thing in today's overused world. Yet most of this vast area is unprotected and its future not assured. Fortunately, a unique coalition of groups has come together to achieve the protection of the Coral Sea and its extraordinary marine life. To succeed, this initiative needs your support. Bounded by Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands, New Caledonia and the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park, the Australian part of the Coral Sea covers about one million square kilometres. The Coral Sea is unique. It's the last place on the planet Earth where large pelagic fish are still reasonably abundant, where you can still find significant populations of endangered and critically endangered species. It's home to a spectacular array of wildlife, including whales, dolphins, sea turtles, sharks and rays, mighty tuna and swordfish, the ancient nautilus, migratory seabirds, and hundreds of species of colourful reef fish. Below the surface lie many different habitats from beautiful reefs and plateaus to towering underwater mountains and deep sea canyons. Occasionally a sandy cay will break the surface, giving seabirds and turtles a place to nest and a place to rest. The Coral Sea also occupies an important place in the history of Australia. The Battle of the Coral Sea in the Second World War was the beginning of the change in the direction of the tide of the war against Japan. As a result of that battle, the, the invasion of Port Moresby was avoided. And what was really important was that the sea lines of communication between America and Australia uh, were not severed. The sinking of the Lexington and its uh, position just inside of our exclusive economic zone adds historical context to the importance of that sea, which itself supports marine life of all kinds. It was Captain Matthew Flinders who first coined the name Coral Sea. In the early days of commerce and trade, Shipwrecks were not uncommon due to the region's often stormy weather and isolated reefs. The surviving wrecks offer an insight into our maritime history. The relics tell stories of human tragedy or triumph over adversity. They add a human face to this large, intact marine wilderness. Unfortunately, the future health of the Coral Sea is not guaranteed. The coral reefs in the Coral Sea are much smaller and much more dispersed than the Great Barrier Reef and that, that means they're more vulnerable to climate change. So I think it's absolutely critical to protect all of those reefs. Fishing in the Coral Sea has already caused a significant decline in the catch rates of yellowfin and big-eye tuna, species that are overfished throughout the western and central Pacific. At a global level, longline fishing has wiped out 90% of the world's large ocean fish in just 50 years. The world's oceans are in trouble. We've seen the collapse of fishery after fishery, and now there's nowhere for the fish to hide. What we're doing with no-take areas is artificially putting back in place somewhere where the fish can hide, a refuge from overfishing. There's a critical need to do that on a much larger scale to maintain oceanic species like sharks and tuna and one of the best places to do it, arguably the best place to do it in the world, is the Coral Sea because it's one of the last few places that's still in pretty good nick. The longline hooks not only catch tuna and billfish but seabirds, turtles and sharks as well. In recent years, well over 100 tonnes of shark have been caught each year in the Coral Sea as bycatch in the tuna fishery. To protect the area's unique natural and maritime values, a unique coalition of scientists, non-governmental groups, former naval commanders and war veterans is calling for the declaration of an Australian Coral Sea Heritage Park. It would be the largest fully protected area in the world. Species like whales and sharks and turtles are very hard to protect inside a marine park unless it's absolutely huge. So clearly we need to match the size of marine parks with the migration uh, scale of those highly vulnerable species. The marine park that we're talking about is a no fish 
park. It is not a no-go park. It's a place where fish can regenerate. It shouldn't be that difficult to do a sophisticated analysis that says uh, the cost of fishing in this area is X, the value is Y, uh, offer them a, a reasonable recompense and, and let's negotiate. Um, and I, I think that's the Australian way of doing business. Uh, it's, it's just one of those big issues that Australia ought to confront because it can. And the federal government has the power to do it, it doesn't need to pass any new laws. And I think it's just, frankly, it's a no-brainer. The case for an Australian Coral Sea Heritage Park is compelling. Business as usual in terms of how we manage marine resources is not an option. It's not an option because the world is changing extraordinarily rapidly, more rapidly than it ever has. Our current management structures will simply be insufficient. They're already insufficient. We need to improve them and setting up the world's first no-take zone in the Coral Sea led by Australia with huge support from the Australian public, I think will be a milestone. This is a leadership issue, and I would expect that those who are leading our country at this stage, indeed those who would like to lead, would really see the common sense in this proposition. It's for the good of Australia, it's for the good of our region, and frankly, it's good for the world. So why not do it? The federal government has the power to do it, and with your support and the support of many other Australians, we can persuade the government to fully protect this environmental and historical treasure forever. Mm -hmm.